My name is Caroline, sometimes known as Mrs Rouse, and welcome to This Town's Worship, all about amazing places. We will learn more about our amazing world and about ourselves. Behind me is a picture of my amazing place, the sea, the warm blue sea. I wonder what your amazing place is. We can't go anywhere at the moment, but we can travel in our imagination. Close your eyes and imagine yourself in your amazing place. Take a look around you. What can you see? How does it feel? Today we're going to be thinking about rivers. There are rivers on every continent of the world. I wonder how many you can name. <coughs> Hello, my name is me. This is me. Hello, my name is Mike. And we're going to do a quiz all about rivers. Yep, we're going to give you some clues. And you have to guess the river. Mabel here is acting really long because this river is the world's longest river. It is 4,160 miles long. It runs from Burundi in North East Africa to Egypt. Have you worked out what it is? So that we to see me do an amazing job cleaning the dirt away from this. All right, Mabel is now pretending to wash herself. That's because this river is considered by Hindus to be a cleansing river and it washes away everybody's sins. It is found in the Bay of Bengal. Let's see if we can find out what it is. Have a guess. All right, Mabel is pretending to have an argument this time. And that's because you can see this river in the opening credits of a very famous sitcom, EastEnders. This river runs all the way from the Cotswolds right to Essex. And right where it is at Essex, it's actually tidal, which makes the city of London the UK's biggest seaside town. Have you guessed what the river is? Let's have a look. Okay, our next river is the world's busiest river and it has given birth to more cities than any other river on the planet. Mabel is eating delicious noodles right now because this river is found in China. Can you guess which river it is? Mabel is doing her interpretation of water skiing because in this river and a little lake next to it was where it was invented. How exciting! Not only that, but this river also has sharks. It is the, one of the greatest rivers in the North American continent. Let's find out what it is. Okay, Mabel is being lots and lots of different kinds of creatures because this river is full of diversity. It is the world's most famous online shopping website. Oh no, hang on, that's the wrong fact. No, this is the world's greatest river. It covers almost an entire continent. Have you guessed what it is? Let's find out. is a flow of fresh water that runs from the highest point of the land down to the sea or ocean. Rivers can be straight or meandering, fast or slow flowing, deep or shallow, wide or narrow, long or short. Most towns and villages were built along rivers because rivers provide us with food, fish, energy, activities, transport routes and of course water for drinking and watering fields. Rivers can be fast and furious in places but the Bible often uses rivers 
as a way of describing the feeling of peace. What does the feeling of peace mean to you? Perhaps calm, still, quiet, gentle, tranquility. In the book of Isaiah, in the Bible, it says God wants to offer his peace to us like a river. And in our Bible story today, Jesus wanted to get away from the crowds to have some peace and quiet himself. But he ended up bringing his peace, not only to his friends, but also to the wind and waves. Over to Katie. <laughs> Our Bible story today is from the New Testament book of Matthew, chapter 8. It's a story about when Jesus wanted some peace and quiet. Jesus had been busy teaching and preaching to the big crowds of people who wanted to hear all about God's love and about the stories Jesus could tell them. But Jesus was tired and weary after all this talking and he needed to rest. It was a beautiful day. The sky was blue and the sun was shining. Jesus said to his special friends, Hey, why don't we get a boat and go for a ride across the Sea of Lake Galilee? That's a great idea, his friends all said. And so Jesus climbed aboard a boat that was moored at the side of the lake and his disciples followed him. One, two, three. Whoops, three, that one's really keen. <laughs> Ooh, they're all falling over. Four, five, six, seven. Jesus had 12 special friends. As they climbed aboard the boat, they could see that the water was calm and still. A perfect day for sailing. As they set sail, the gentle waves were relaxing and calming, and soon Jesus lay down and fell fast asleep. The disciples were having a really enjoyable trip. It was so relaxing, drifting along the sea as they went across the water. But suddenly, the day was not so perfect. Suddenly, the bright sunshine was hidden by a cloud and the sky turned black. The wind began to howl. The waves began to roll. The little boat was tossed from side to side. The disciples were beginning to get frightened. But Jesus was still fast asleep. Help, help, the disciples shouted. We're all going to drown. Jesus, wake up, wake up and help us. Well, Jesus wasn't scared at all. He woke up and he stood up against the side of the boat and he, oops, let's stand him up. And he commanded the wind, quiet now. And he said to the waves, peace, be still. At once the wind stopped howling and the waves stopped tossing. All was quiet and still again. The friends looked at one another and they thought, how had this happened? Jesus said to them, why? Were you all so frightened? You didn't have to worry. All you had to do was trust me. See, everything is calm. And it was a perfect day once again. Thank you to Katie for our story today. You could have a go at retelling the story yourself. Tell it to your family using bits and bobs you've got around the house, just like she did. Now I've got some questions for you about the story. 
Why do you think Jesus got in the boat? Why were the disciples frightened? What did Jesus do to help? What do you think? I think Jesus went in the boat because he wanted some peace and quiet, some rest. His disciples probably thought that they were going to drown because the waves were so big. And Jesus helped by calming the storm and bringing peace into the situation. Christians believe that God is in control of everything. So when even when our lives might be a bit choppy like the waves, Jesus wants to bring his peace. In calming the wind and waves, Jesus wanted his friends to know that he is God's son and that he cared for them even when they were scared. You might be feeling a bit more worried than usual at the moment as everything is so different. So what can we do to help us have peace like a river? Perhaps you could go somewhere quiet and relaxing to take time out to think or calm down. Think about and name what we're worried about and then tell someone in our family what we're worried about. Listen to the help and support of others. Be kind and gentle to those around us. They need peace too. And give your worries to God because he cares for you. When I drop this pebble into the water, initially it will create a splash. Then there will be ripples and eventually the water will be still. As we reflect on this story and of how we can enjoy peace, you may want to imagine throwing your worries into the water like the pebble and wait for the stillness. Yes, you can't sing. I'll have a bit of help with this one, I think. Elisa? Okay, take it away. going to end our assembly with a prayer. You can join in by saying Amen at the end. If not, you can just focus on the ripples of the water and pebble in this jar 
and think about a place where you may find peace. Dear God, thank you that you care for each and every one of us, however we may feel. Please fill each one of us with your peace like a river today so that we can bring peace to others.